What is up everyone? Welcome back to this channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Obviously you want to start a vending business or maybe you have a vending business but want to understand the do's and don'ts from someone who's been in the vending business for over five years. I've placed and located over 150 vending machines to this point. No, that doesn't mean I have 150 machines out. I actually sold some of my route recently. As you could tell, um, not that much money. It was a bunch of bulk locations, but I sold some of my route. Um, but let's hop right into this video for you to learn the do's and don'ts that you should do when starting your vending business. So you wanna start a vending business. Obviously, a lot of people on the internet want to start vending businesses. You see vending machine videos all over. You see, oh shit, there's another YouTuber here. This kid Dominic, oh, he thinks he could start a vending business. Yes, I've actually run a completely successful vending business for the past five years. I started a vending business when I was 17 years old in high school. So I do know a little bit about the vending machine business. I know a little bit about the ins and outs when starting your vending machine business. Trying to, you know, at least show you the do's and don'ts or the good and bad of the vending business instead of just friggin' pulling out stacks of cash from my machines and not telling you how much profit I make per item per, per machine, how much gas I'm using, how much my employees cost, how much it costs to run a business per month with variable costs. There's a lot of factors that go into a business that, you know, when you pull out stacks of singles from a vending machine, you may think you're making all of that, but that's not completely true. So, this video is going to focus on all aspects of vending machine business, all aspects of it. Arcade machines, bulk machines, coin pusher machines, claw machines, soda snack machines, ATMs. All of these machines, the number one thing that obviously everyone knows, and I think you should know at this point if you're looking at this video, is location. Location, location, location. It's a location business. It's 90% location business, I would say. If you have a good location, if you have the foot traffic, if you have the people there that are willing to spend the money, put the change in your machine, or take money out of an ATM, or put money into your claw machine, um, knowing they may or may not win, that's your biggest win. So location is your number one thing that you wanna know. So now the second thing that you wanna know, going on the opposite side, which is not a pro, here's a con to the vending business, is not all machines are treated the same. Not all machines are going to make you the same amount of money. Not all machines are going to be good on location. So in some of my videos, I have previously talked and said, hey, having certain types of machines, they'll be good. You know, just start with crap machines and then eventually change it. I don't believe that. I think really you should have quality machines from the beginning because you don't want to start with crappy machines if you're going all the way through. Obviously, if you think you're going to enter the vending business, buy a used machine for $250, a used soda snack machine and place it, you're wrong. That's not how it works. If you're buying a soda snack machine for $250, that machine's going to break down. You're going to have a lot of issues and you're going to have a harder time finding parts for your machines. So that goes into the next part of what I think is another bad thing. Another con to this business is people thinking they can buy used vending machines and then succeed. That's not how this works because you're competing against multi-billion dollar companies. Companies that have so much more money than you, so much more inventory management, so much you know more people on their payroll that are running their vending business that you know in their machines, if one row is out, they are at that location filling it up. It doesn't matter if they only make 10, 15, 20 dollars from that location. When they go, they can still go because they have thousands, tens of thousands of machines across the entire country, if not across the world. So you're competing against companies that have billions of dollars and you need to understand that your machines need to compete with that because you're not going to be able to get a location offering junk machines, offering machines that are going to break, offering machines that look really old and used. You cannot do that in this business and I don't suggest that. I don't want someone watching my videos and thinking, hey, I can go buy a used soda snack machine and make a lot of money off of that. I don't like that because I think I should be telling you that you need to have some backing. You need to have some investment in the beginning if you really want to start with soda snack machines. If you don't, you can start with bulk machines. But bulk machines, obviously, it's a little less upfront, but it's a little less every single month. So the snack machines, a little more upfront, a little more every month. That's essentially how it is. Pretty simple right there. Um, another bad thing I think about this business is that people don't seem to want to understand that it actually takes a lot of work. Yes, it technically is passive. 
technically is my word. I would actually call my business a semi absentee business. I don't have to be there every single day, but I should be there every single day and I should be going to locations every single day. I should be locating every day. You know, a passive income business is a business that you really don't have to do anything for and you have money coming in over and over again. I do not believe uh, the vending business is a passive income business. Now I'll show you a couple clips here of me collecting from various machines. As I talk, yes, okay, when you go to machines, you're collecting money. Yes, you can go and take quarters out of your machines, dollar bills, five dollar bills, which are so awesome in this business, out of your vending machines, but that doesn't make it passive because once you start going to your locations and spending time on it, it becomes a not passive income business. So to understand that it's not a passive income business, if you're looking for a get rich quick scheme, if you're looking for a way to just make a lot of money overnight, I don't think vending is that. Uh, personally, that to me, you would need to spend a good amount of time in the beginning, maybe 10 hours a week, if not a little more, going out and getting your nose, getting your rejections, because you're not gonna know what to say. You barely have a business in the beginning and you need to plan to understand that this business is serious. You have to take it seriously if you want serious results. And that's just how it is in life and everything in general. If you're not gonna take something serious, you're not gonna get those results that you really wanna see. Um, a good thing, I guess, would be that you have assets. My, my friend Chrome Vending, Mike G, he says assets versus liabilities. I think when you have a machine, it is an asset, but it has to be placed, and I do agree with him there after a little bickering with Chrome Vending. If you don't know Chrome Vending, check out his channel, but I had assets. I had assets that I could sell to make money because they were on location, and people buy the crap out of machines on location. People know that the vending business is a location business. So if they can go in and they can come to my business and say, hey, all right, I'll buy you know X amount of machines for you for this amount of money, this amount per year, because it's not like you're getting just the machine's value. You're getting a year or two of income of that machine plus the value of the machine when you sell that location if you get a good deal. So that's the best part about this business. When you're out, you can build a route. Guess what? If you are living somewhere and you want to go out and build a route, but then you eventually move, you can sell that route. You have now an asset. You almost have an investment. Um, it is a little hard sometimes to sell your routes to people because they don't have the uh, complete amount of money, so they only buy parts of it. But if you build up a small vending business, you can sell your business and then you have money that you can go and start another business or go and buy soda snack machines. So that's a big thing in this business is that they are assets. Your vending machines are assets to you. So owning them is similar to owning a house, not the exact same thing. Um, your vending business really doesn't accrue equity over time, but you can sell your business for a lot more than what it costs when it's placed. And I guess that goes into the next thing is as you grow, you'll have to realize that some of your locations, they're going to make $5 a month, $10 a month, $15 a month. It's not worth it, at least for me in my eyes, and some people could disagree, but it's not worth it in my eyes to keep these crap locations when I have locations that do three, four, five, ten times the amount that those locations do. So I start, I'm starting to sell off my slower locations just so I don't have to go to these locations, just so I don't have to waste the time going to these locations. And I guess my final two pros and cons here is the fact that the vending machine business is pretty saturated now. I'm not going to say it's because of the YouTube videos and things like that. It is partially because of these major corporations and companies that get these major deals with FedEx and UPS and all these other big companies. They have the deals with all the big companies. And especially in New York, there's plenty of companies bigger than me that have a lot of contracts. In New York, there's not a lot of bulk vendors. I'll be completely honest. There's a couple of little guys here, but there's not really big, big people. There's maybe one or two other people that are, you know, probably larger than me, I'd be completely honest. Um, but that is it here. It's not like a crazy amount. And you can start a business uh, in your town. You just have to understand that there will be competition. I like to think competition is an illusion because if you focus on the competition, you won't grow your business. You'll sit back and say, hey, how can I place a machine here if my competitor already has a machine here? But guess what? If my competitor has a machine here, I'll place one next to it and I'll compete with him. And it's pretty much that simple, just sell different products. Um, and that's another thing with this business. It becomes a product game. Um, when you're in, I guess, with so many different machines, arcade machines, ATM machines, claw machines, bulk machines, toy machines, candy machines, snack machines, soda machines, yeah, that's a lot. You have 30, 40, 50 different items that you now have to stock in your vending business that you now have to have ready to go whenever you're gonna go on your route. You now need to have an inventory of product, which then uh, starts as a fixed cost, essentially, or a variable cost, I would say, to your vending business that you need to realize the variable cost of doing multiple different products. I think people try to get into this business, they, they do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Focus on one thing. If I can end this video, 
here because it's getting a little long now. But if I, if I could tell you one thing to do, uh, if you're looking to get into the vending business, focus on that one thing that um, you're going to do in this vending business for the next year or the next six months. Focus on one thing, bulk vending, toy vending, gumball machines, candy machines, arcade machines, ATMs, soda snack machines. Focus on that one machine that you're going to continually go out, continually place. You'll get really good at locating. You'll get really good at your pitch. You'll get really good at knowing who you need to talk to um, for this business for you to succeed. Focus on one specific thing in this business. Don't focus on every area. Focus on one area and you'll succeed a lot better that way because you're niching down. You're understanding one product, one thing. And then eventually as you understand that and grow with that, you can go into different things. Um, but another thing also is your machines can get stolen because I wish I had a clip of it today and I was going to record a clip, but my mentor actually called me as I was recording. Um, but a place, a pizza place actually closed down that I had a double head vending machine in and my machine is just sitting in there and I can call them all day, but the place is closed. So now my machine's inside of there. I have to try to call the property owner and see if I can get my machine back, but that's a cost of this business. And I've maybe only lost five or six machines over the past five and a half years being in this business, but losing your machine, especially if you have ghetto areas, I don't really know the politically correct term for that low income areas um, that your machines are placed at. You need to be very careful with uh, machines getting lost, machines getting stolen, or even businesses closing down because whether they can't pay their rent or whatever it is, I don't know what it is yet because I haven't heard back, but you can lose machines in this business. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I've laid down a couple things that I think you should do and shouldn't do or what you should understand about this video about starting a vending machine business. If you have any more questions, if you're just starting out, Get in touch with me below. Um, I do calls now. I'm trying to do consulting calls. Not that I'm a consultant. Um, I am a mentor, but if you do want to talk to me, um, I don't even think it's that much. I'm doing like a 50% discount. You can check that out. Also, I have a vending book which walks you through all areas of the vending business. A um, little more detail than these videos can ever really take. Um, it's a nice little book. It's about 75 pages. You could type your email down below and then you'll get a discount to that. And then one more plug here, don't go yet, enhanceentrepreneurs.com. If you really want to succeed as being an entrepreneur, go to enhanceentrepreneurs.com. We're a community of global entrepreneurs around the world looking to stray away from the traditional path. So thank you so much for your time on this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate every single one of you and let's just keep growing. Let's start our vending businesses. Let's be successful and let's make actual passive income, which essentially isn't really from soda snack machines, more from the bulk side and ATM side, but let's go out, let's get locations and let's succeed together. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.